Hello there, my name is Dolari Akim Rulli and you're welcome to this edition of The Business the Exclusive. Today we have with us Mr. John Dalentin, founder CEO of the now defunct Bond Bank and he'll be joining us to discuss topical issues, especially the foreign exchange market crisis that we have on our hands. It's been a wild week you know, for the Naira with the sharp swings that we've been seeing and the central bank governor granted an interview on a rise where he talked about some of the policies that they are putting in place in order to ameliorate the pain that's on the streets in Nigeria. So joining us will be Mr. John Darlington to talk about some of these issues as well as prefer solutions out of the foreign um, exchange market crisis that we find ourselves in today. Hello sir, how are you doing? It's a pleasure to have you on the show today. Um, Mr. John Darlington, founder of One Bank. So I'll get straight to it. Um, I would like, I mean, you are well aware of the economic crisis that we have at our hands in Nigeria at this time, um, especially as it regards to the foreign exchange market. We've seen some very wild swings in the FX market in the last one week. The Naira has gone from about 900 Naira uh, per dollar, the official window, to about 1,500 Naira know, currently. So, the central bank governor, Olaemi Kadosu, um, granted an interview this morning to Arise News, you know, where he talked about some of the reforms that the central bank has in the pipeline, you know, ways to address the Naira slide that we are seeing. What did you make of this interview? Thank you for this opportunity. And I was glad I worked that interview myself. Let us back up for a minute. I've been a player for this in this market for a long time. I've not seen a governor central bank subject himself to that openness. He was brilliant, he was calm, he was honest, he was knowledgeable, he showed the character and the strength you want to see in a government. Therefore, we all must support him to succeed. The governor spoke with candor, brutal honesty but understanding the issues. The governor showed passion. The governor showed understanding. The governor showed sensitivity. The governor understood what the issues were. And his communication was brilliant. And what did I pick from that interview? First, you, the media, must support him to succeed. The narrative, the way you tell a headline story, is fundamental. Secondly, is constituency. The banks and bankers, it's time to show patriotism. The bankers must not live up to the responsibility of being a bank in a society. The bank must even be self accounting and responsible before the regulators even come in. We all have a stake in making it succeed. Therefore, it's time to say peace. Let's understand we have only one country. And the governor can only succeed if we all the stakeholders, media, the banking community, the customers, the ordinary citizens. Because we have a government that has shown character, that has shown understanding, that has shown determination, that I will tackle this issue and we shall succeed. But if we all insist, it won't succeed, it can't succeed. Therefore, it's time to show patriotism. It's time to give his team time for the result to start showing. And I think it was a brilliant interview. Okay, so um, I mean, for me, I think it's only normal that, um, you know, our loyalty lies to the economy. Um, it's, it's only, I mean, because whatever happens, the result of his policies, we all feel it in equal measure, the entire economy. It's, it's, if you if you speak to manufacturers, for instance, about the type of untold hardship that the Pressure on the naira is causing them. I mean, you hear a lot, same as households who are having to 
spend much more than they are uh, that they had to do in the past today you know to buy food items and other things because of the imported inflation that we're facing as a result of the higher rates. But so I would like to ask you, what do you say to critics of the central bank governor who say that he's moving too soon? So yes, he does have a good understanding of what the issues are, but then his reforms, the pace of the reforms are not being fast enough. He's not acting like we're in a crisis. What do you say to those people? My first reaction would say, calm down. How did you come to the conclusion that it's not moving as fast as you want? Good question. Okay. No, that's foreign good. investors are not coming back as much as you expect. If you look at the report the on the foreign NGS, investors foreign will not come. Not foreign foreign not foreign investors will not come higher. until you honor your forward contract. And, and how long does it take to do this? Your liquidity. The government does not create forex. But don't we have over thirty billion dollars in external? You reserve? cannot use your external reserve that way overnight and, and leave the country vulnerable. So calm down. Yes, it may seem it's taking a while, but understand the rot that was in the system. It's no more news how unprofessional, how. I don't want to use the word I feel like using it for the last governor of Central Bank. It was an embarrassment to most people that understand banking and that have known him for many years. Therefore, for any incoming governor to even understand the state and the rot in the system will take a while. Remember, Central Bank is an institution. The last governor didn't act alone for the rot that is unfolding today to be there. I would just say most of the deputy, most of the directors today, they're not aware of it. So why do you think they were exposed the rot themselves? How do you think the report they are generating for the governor is authentic? Why would the governor create a second layer of verified? before he start forming his policies. You heard him today. They have to engage an external party to verify the obligations we are owing yeah. on the world contract. And you could see the quantum and the volume. 2.4 billion dollars. Therefore, sympathize with the man. The job he has to deal with it's not easy. It's easy to, uh, to point the finger, but you have to understand what needs to be done if the issue has to be tackled. Wait a minute. For many years, we've refused to address the issues. Now we're attacking the issue. The body will be there. You will feel the pain. Tell me, before the joy of having a baby comes, was the pain of labor. The question is, we must have faith in leadership and governance again, that they are doing the right, that they are sincerity. And I'm saying to you with audacity that the governor we have today, the team while they are doing we have today, in the economy, they are people of character, they are people of integrity, and they are people of knowledge and they also have hearts. Therefore, I plead we give them time. Yes, it might be taking a while. How much time? If I knew the answer, I would be a billionaire. But I will speculate from the sincerity and the strategy and the beautiful communication with the governor today. We give them six months or nine months. It will turn around. It will turn around. And the beauty and the joy will come. And we'll be grateful that God gave us a team that had the courage, the knowledge to deal with the fundamentals that we need. 
Yes, I like to agree with you, sir, that I like any can do so as a backdrop. But actually, you know, the old long term gains for the economy, we know that for, for sure. We'd rather have one exchange rate than the multiple rates that we had under the last government. It just helps to remove that uncertainty that investors had that also led to them, you know, staying light on the sidelines and not wanting to have anything to do with, with Nigeria. But then you, you said something earlier about the need for us to support the central bank government, you know, on this quest, you know, to deliver the gains of the reforms. If you were still managing director of Bond Bank today, in what way would you support the central bank government to ensure that it's able to, you know, fulfill some of the demands that our office, including stabilized in Arab today? Banking is a business that is regulated. Banking is a business of character and integrity. Banking is a business of confidence. Therefore, as a CEO, the first thing you owe your stakeholders is the integrity of your license, which means you must operate within the guidelines and the regulatory framework of your environment. Profit or other consideration do not surpass the integrity and the protection of your license. Therefore, you must be in bed with the regulators and conform to regulatory policies and framework. And you could see in the last few weeks, the central bank have been coming out with some set of policies. Therefore, as a CEO of character and reputation, you must create a system within your bank that conforms and operates with those guidelines and not wait for the CPA to come up with this. Simple. And if you read there behind the line what the CBA has been pointing at, where they are going. If the banks collaborate, cooperate, and operate with integrity, and you will see a major shift. I don't want to assume you will have a CEO sit in a bank and speculate on the line. And if I'm a regulator, I will chop the fingers of that CEO and I will threaten their license. Therefore, I'm using this medium to appeal, to plead with CEOs and stakeholders in the bank. Don't allow your natural human greed or profit to hide your responsibility to operate resourcefully within the regulatory framework and understand there's a bigger goal than your profit, profit motive and collaborate with the government and the regulators to help us strengthen and rebuild the second hmm. All right, so well said. Um, don't you think that the banks might also need some support from the central bank, especially in the area of the cash reserve requirements? At 32.5%, it's one of the highest in the world. I mean, this is just. Um, Idle funds sitting in the CBM mm -hmm. vaults earning zero cash. Do you think that the central bank needs to start to review that, especially given that the effective CRR rate is even much higher than that? From what we hear from bankers, it's close to 50%, which means you just have 50% of depositors' funds sitting idle in the CBM vaults earning no return whatsoever. Do you think that policy needs to be reviewed? You heard the governor today when he was asked point blank why. Having the MPC function ever. You heard his explanation. And I sympathize with him. And I heard him loud and clear. If we had an MPC, that didn't have a voice that warned us about where.
together where with the last governor? Why would any governor jump to bed with that same group of members? Because of the geopolitical clique in this country, in constituting a new MPC, it will take a while because of the balancing of interests. You could see how simple as operational decision of moving some department of the CBN to Lagos has created a whole opera. Therefore, I'm expecting the new MPC to be professional, to be men of character, to be men of knowledge, and to be men of courage. Within that ambit of group of the right professionals, if there's anything wrong in the past that is hurting the business, it will be addressed. I have implicit confidence in the character, ability, and honesty and vision of the governor central government. We need all. It'd be well. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, well said. And um, one of the things that he did say, you know, during that interview about the NPC was that um, you know he's been trying to break away from, from the old, right? That uh, there hasn't been any strong transmission mechanism between the NPR, that's monetary policy rates and rates in the market, which is true. The NPR should be the benchmark interest rates, but we know that today in the market we have rates that are well below that benchmark rate. I mean, for instance, one year TV is about eight percent. And the other NPR that's about eighteen percent. So, what do you say? What? How do you? How would you advise the CBN government to go about calls that suggest that look, the interest rates, the market interest rates. We're not talking about OMO, open market operations. We're talking about treasury bills and the likes. That the market interest rates need to go up if you're going to incentivize new dollar inflows into the economy, as well as get Nigerians who are sitting on huge amounts of dollars in dollar accounts to bring out their money you know to invest in the naira that the interest rates need to go up but we also know that it's a delicate balance here because as the interest rates go up it means that the borrowing costs for the federal government also go up and well i mean it's well publicized the problems that we have in that area we know that uh, the federal government last year spent more than 90 percent of its revenue servicing debt so that's tricky but how would you advise the central bank government to go about this but it's one thing that is clear from our interaction with the market is the interest rates need to Go up. Those are one of the reforms that the market is waiting for, but the governor has been slow you know, to uh, deliver that. The expression that the governor has been slow is coming from. You know, it's always better to take your time on the drawing board, preparing your architectural drawing, preparing your site plan, mm -hmm. putting together the right team, so that the day you move to site, you don't alter mm -hmm. anything, yeah. it's clockwork. Mm -hmm. So the same thing mm. is this with the governor coming in. I think me and you and the society and our country called Nigeria underestimated the rot and the damage that went on that the last call for it. Okay. Careful. To unfold the layers before you get to the real substance. Before you start even start reconstructing the reality you are confronted with. It takes time. And one of the things you must also understand, the office of the government doesn't lack resources. Resources to put the right team together. The resources to get the best team together. And you must also understand the antecedent of the current government. The current government has been a player and is a player. Therefore, I'm not going to sit here and tell 
the current governor what to do. I have implicit confidence that the governor plus the minister of finance, the prime minister of the economy, hmm? both of them and their team has what it takes. If only we as the people were patient. If only we as the people would play our part. How do you deal with a situation whereby the falconizer, your carpenter, are all speculating on the dollar and naira? Let us all play our part as patriotic citizens, as committed citizens. Truthfully, with the level of inflation, with where we are, we don't need anybody to tell you rate us in the job. But I have implicit confidence in the governor and his team. All I'm saying, give them a bit of time. Now the policy is not been unfolding, and I can see a direction, I can see sincerity, I can see commitment, I can see understanding. So, I mean, it's, if I hear you correctly, it's more about urging patience, you know, with the central bank governor. Just have confidence in the reforms that is embarking on, and then Nigeria should just expect that at the end of the day, we will turn the corner and um, the pain that we see today will be ameliorated. But what's your final word to Nigerians? Because it's a lot, it's, there's a lot of pain out there, you know, there's a lot of pain. There is pain in the land. I'm a village man. I spent time in my village, Ubiaja in Edo State. So I feel the pain. But one other thing I will explain to you, the pain of the real poor man of the society is different from the pain we hear. The pain you hear today is the pain of the elite who has been the predominant beneficiary of subsidy in our economy. Because the real poor man has no voice. The real poor man has no voice. But I totally agree with you, there's pain in the land. But the reforms we needed to embark on had no question to bring pain before the benefit comes. How were we going to continue subsidizing petrol and products? Brother, tell me. Yeah. Because we're supposed to Dealing with it, it back now. Address is not back. But with the movement in the exchange rates, yeah, it was seven fifty now, when okay. this current um, yeah, but retail price was moving it to where it is. Yeah, was a major leap. True. So I mean, that if it would not reflect it further, would you call that insensitivity? Hmm. So therefore, let us also understand that the government of today has had the feel for the people, but these are things we must do to have a nation tomorrow. Where in the world would you have 100% disparity between parallel market and official rate? No way. You, just you can see the fraud that was perpetrated. You can see the liquidity that few people had stuck up. Come on, this government has addressed some fundamental issues. Yes, there is pain. But addressing those things automatically was meant to inflate some hardship. Now, what are they doing to quickly cushion this pain and take us to a better place? Therefore, I will join you in saying, Mr. President, there's urgency, there's pressure, there's pain. Put your best hands together, sit on their neck, Keep the ground running, address the issues, and let prosperity come back again. However, keep hope alive, be patient, do your part as a diligent citizen, and don't be despair. Don't give up, don't lose hope. I believe 
sooner or later, you'll see what the government is doing in education. You'll see what they are doing in health. You'll see what they are doing in agriculture. You'll see what they are doing in infrastructure. It takes time for the benefit and the beauty and the result to show. Don't allow the wrong voice to destroy us as a people. You could see the nonsense that came out by the weekend that government wants to convert the Islamia country to Naira. Who does that? Does that mean well for society? So don't give voice to people like that. It will be well, it will improve, and I have confidence in the current team. It will take us to the promised land. What's the the marketplace is the man and supply. If we all go to the market today, huh? Yeah. To say we want to buy tomatoes beyond what you need, what will happen to the price of tomatoes? Of course, it will skyrocket. If we all go to the market today, say I want to buy the yam I need for the next one year, you want to buy the yam you need for one year, what will happen? Let's go to the market, buy as you require. The pressure will come down. Dollar must not become store of value. If dollar becomes store of value, We'll keep facing this. Mm -hmm. So, um, a lot of people think that attracting significant foreign exchange inflows into the economy is not rocket science. If you look at the main sources of dollar inflows into the economy, um, oil, oil receipts, diaspora remittances, um, foreign investments, you know, and loans. But one area that usually gets overlooked um, is diaspora remittances. So, the, I remember that the central bank governor, the previous central bank governor, did say at some point that look. We see reports suggesting that you have north of $20 billion coming into the Nigerian economy every year for Nigerians in the diaspora, but he doesn't see these dollars. And people just imagine that, well, the reason why you don't see the dollars is because they don't go through the official channels. Because you, there's no way you bring your dollars <coughs> to get short change at the official market where you can get a better rate at the black market. So what do you think, where, where do you, what do you see as the impact of all of these reforms in terms of boosting significant inflows through diaspora remittances? And what other ways you think the central bank can explore in order to you know get more dollars into the economy because the problem we have today is the one of dollar supply i'm glad this question has come up one of the things we've not touched this afternoon which this question has triggered is the environment and the elephant in the room is security is security bad security is bad how bad? Bad. But are we managing the information or the communication better? I don't think so. The insecurity in the land is bad. Therefore, Mr. President, it's an alarm. Something has to be done. The security chiefs, their job is cut out for you. Citizens must feel safe in their homes. Citizens must sleep with their eyes closed, both in the cities and the remote part of the country. So we pray and we hope the government will do something about it drastically. But also help government, me and you as citizens, must also provide information. Because some of these criminals, bandits, and headsmen, they live within our midst. Yes. And security must protect people who come forward to give information. The land must be safe, and people must feel safe in the land for money to come. You've listed clearly the various sources of inflows. You could see what government is trying to do about transparency and accountability for the proceeds that come 
to have prime assets in Cuba. And the problem I tested to it today. The second potent source is diaspora remittances. By the time we allow the central bank's policy of eliminating the arbitrage and the bottlenecks in the system with the government's address, and there is free flow of market dynamics. You can go to the bank and do your transaction, either buying or selling, without any hassle, and the government is involved without knowing anybody in the bank. And you feel protected. Unlike what me and you do today, doing transaction on the street, and nobody gives you cover. And I sincerely hope that's a big goal, or one of the benefits that we'll get pretty soon if we all collaborate with the government and the central bank in taking through some of the policies. It's about supply. Me and you must also watch our consumption. If we are all consuming dollars and nobody is producing dollars, who we'll keep dancing around in this circle? We must go back and say, where is our comparative advantages? What can we do? Where do we have to deploy resources to substantially grow the inflow of this dollar into the economy? Our lifestyle has also to be watched. My story is you got to sew your coat according to your material. Don't go and borrow a coat that your material yeah. can't uh, get out for. All hands must be on deck to get out of this mess. We must support production. We must support manufacturers. The marketing arm of institutions must look for new market and new packaging and new avenue whereby we can ship some of the things we produce, even the skill, out of this country to substantially grow the inflow dollars. That is what we bring down the rate and make life easier for you yeah. and me. All right, sir. Thank you so much. So that's all we have time for today on the Business Day exclusive. I hope you enjoyed that interview. Don't forget to visit our website at www.businessday.ng as well as follow us across our various um, social media platforms. Till we come your way next week, my name is Dolly Akimrele. Stay blessed. <laughs>